Today's adventure takes us to the coast of Washington State. Specifically, we're going to Ocean Shores by way of Hoquiam. It's a long, windy road, but worth the trip for a chance at some Pacific Razor Clams. Some friends have invited us to the Dunes Beach Resort, and it's finally time to dig clams. The best time to dig razor clams is at peak low tide, but it's a good idea to get on the beach and start about an hour and a half early if you expect to limit out. Bob's taking us clam digging. Where are we, Bob? I gotta think about that. I gotta look close <laughs> We're at Ocean Shore, Ocean City. This is actually Ocean City right here. The Dunes Resort is set up for ocean beach access with bridges and a series of available trails to get you there. Pacific razor clams can be found along the Pacific West Coast from the eastern Aleutian Islands, Alaska to Pismo Beach, California. They inhabit sandy beaches in the intertidal zone down to a maximum depth of about 30 feet. This species has an elongated oblong narrow shell which ranges from three to six inches in length in the southern portion of its range with individuals up to 11 inches found in Alaska. We have arrived on the beach and as you can see, many clam harvesters prefer to drive right up to the beach. It's completely legal to drive on the ocean shores beaches. The local and state governments simply ask that you do so responsibly and avoid driving in or near the water. Some pointers from one of our hosts, Bob Lavery. Oh, you find the little holes, holes in the ground, little holes, little clam, big hole, big clam, and you find it and you Go down a little bit of an angle towards the water and go down about halfway. Don't try to be manly because you only beat the crap out of yourself. Just get half a dig at a time. Usually on the first dig, you can see the spout, the water coming out where the clam's at. You just aim it, go for it, you got on the second shot, no effort. Easy to go. But I've had a couple of drinks and a little party, so I'm liable to see two holes at the same time. So. You see me doing this and this is my clam gun, that means there's only one when I'm seeing two. Finally at the tide level, you know, let's get some for? clams. Brianna has spotted the first clam. Okay, you go a little deeper. Now plug it and pull it out. Go for it, Rock. There he is, look at that, Brianna, that's your first. Razor clams will make a round mound in the sand just over their necks. The siphon sits just below the surface, filtering the seawater for its food. Brianna, clam killer. To use the gun, slant the top of the tube slightly away from the ocean. Work the tube in carefully with a rocking or twisting motion down six to 10 inches below the surface. Place your thumb over the air vent and pull up using your leg muscles. Keeping your back straight will avoid muscle strain. Do this one to three times and check each core that you bring up. The clam may be concealed within. If the clam does not come up with the tube, reach in the hole for it. Uh, there it is, there it is. No. That's four? Yeah. Razor clam digging is extremely popular and people come from all over the state to participate. Razor clamming is open during the colder months, so warm clothing is a must. Check the Washington Clam's Fishing Game business, Department website for specifics on season openings. Look in the camera. Tell me hey, you're having fun. having fun. Look in the camera and say I'm having fun. This clam digger is tapping the surface to see if he can get a razor clam to flinch and create a depression or dimple in the sand. Digging with a shovel is a difficult maneuver and is normally done by experienced harvesters. Joey's having a tough time locating the clams today, but his sister is hot on the trail. You saw him? Okay. Oh, wow, 
look at, hold that thing up. I think we might have to contact the state. Rihanna, you are a clamming machine. Watch out, it's gonna bite! You want to lift with your legs when using the clam gun. There he is right there. One shot. Swing. There it is. Brianna has her 15 clam limit, and you can see a couple of them trying to dig their way back into the ground. So how do you feel about your first day clamming? Your back hurt? The clams weren't as accommodating for Brianna's brother, Joey. Joey? How do you feel about your clam haul? Normal. Normal? Yeah. So your your uh, sixteen year old sister I'm content. tripled you? Yeah, I'm content. You're content. Yeah, she's wow, you can't please her. So. <laughs> Alright. I'm probably happier than her with than what she's got. Maybe. Yeah, I am. All in all, it was a pretty good day. Joey has already limited out several times this year, and Brianna aced in her debut. Back to Bob and Rocky's place. They've got a great setup with a deck above the living area that allows a view of the ocean. We had a great time clamming last night and we got home late so we put them on ice and now we're going to clean them. So we're going to clean the clams now. Of course Brianna won't do it so I'm going to show you real quick the trick to it and it's this easy. These are razor clams and the reason they call them razor clams is this shell will cut you it's fairly sharp. So what we do is we take kind of somewhat a dull knife going on the side there's two muscles that hold the shell together. You slice it real close to the shell on both sides. And the shell will open up. And then you use the knife to cut the clam out of the shell. And we're going to do that for all 20 of them. We'll check back with you in a minute. All right, we're almost done here, and as you can see, <clears throat> the, one of the two muscles that hold the shells shut are a lot like scallops. So I'm putting them in their own dish, and ju those are just the partials right now from cleaning them, but I'm gonna pull the muscles out of each of the clams, so we'll have a basically a scallop treat later. So now I'm doing the last one, and really all we've done to this point is to get them out of the shell. The next step is going to be <clears throat> to uh, 
clean the clam and separate the parts. So if you look at the clam, big picture, at the top you have the siphon. That's a double chambered siphon. It's what it uses to uh, suck in air and water and uh, filter the water to eat. And then on the bottom of the clam on each one, this is called the digger. And this muscle ends up being probably the uh, the tenderest of all the parts of the clam. So this is the part I like to use for chowder. And the rest of the clam meat, including the siphon, will chop up into one or two inch strips and we'll make clam strips out of it. We're just about done cleaning them all. Joey finally got out of the rack to help finish it. He's getting all the sand out of the bodies. So right now, if you look at the clam here, Brianna, this is called the zipper. The shell, the hinge was back here. Here was the opening. So you're going to go up the zipper, open it up. Before you uh, open up the siphon, cut the tip of it off. Now we're going to go in the siphon, one. And then like I said, that was a two uh, chamber siphon. So now we go into the second one. Open all that up so we can get at all that sand and get it out. Now here's basically the internal organs of the clam. So we're going to clip that. And then we're going to pull the digger from the main body. Here's the digger. And here's basically the guts. So you're going to clip the corner. And you'll see this thing right here. It's a little enzyme sac. That's what the clam uses to help digest its food. So we'll take the digger and also open it up wide. And then we're going to scrape all that out here in a little bit. And I know it looks ugly, but if you could look into the sink here, this is all the diggers I'm going to clean out and then all the guts. And we're going to try to use as much of this clam as we can. So all these guts we're going to freeze. We're going to use them for crab bait here coming this summer. We've cleaned the main bodies. Now I'm finishing up the diggers, if you can see here. Basically, once you've cut that digger wide open, you just this is where all the guts are. You just kind of scrape. Make sure that anything that is not that yummy, kind of creamy clam color is out of there. Once we get that pretty good, rinse it out. All that all that gut material out of there. So they're, they're in this dish. This is what we're going to use for today's chowder. Here's our scallops. Here's the main bodies that we'll use for clam strips later. And right here is the guts. So I'm going to use these snack size bags. I'm going to freeze seal these in probably three different groups. And when you throw them in your crab pot frozen solid, they'll slowly melt and they'll just set a nice chum trail for the crab. So use as much of the clam as humanly possible. So give us a, a minute here to clean up and then we'll get to the chowda. Here are the mussel pieces I was telling you about. We're just gonna saute them up in some butter until they're a nice brown on both sides. And these are as good a scallop as you are ever gonna have. We finished cleaning all the clams and we've prepped all our ingredients for the chowda. This is clam juice for flavor and cornstarch to thicken the sauce. Potatoes, heavy whipping cream to boil everything in, onions and garlic for flavor, a pound and a half of diced clam, and a pound of chopped bacon. Fry the bacon in a pan while you get the cream boiling in a stock pot. Put the bacon in. Dad already put the potatoes in while the camera wasn't rolling. And now we're gonna saute the onions and garlic. I'm sauteing the onions and now we're going to add them to the big pot. And then we're going to move the big pot. 
pot to the big burner. And we're going to add our clams. And we're going to let it boil for 30 minutes. And then we're going to add the cornstarch. Our 30 minutes is up, and now we're going to put the cornstarch in. We're going to put one fourth, or a cup of water in this. And we're going to put a fourth of a cup of cornstarch in it. We're gonna mix it up because if you just pour a cup of or a fourth of a cup of cornstarch in there, it's just gonna clump up. Okay. Now it's mixed up. And we're gonna pour it in there. Perfect. It's ready. Now we're going to eat. <laughs> Might want some crackers. Yeah, it's plenty of rare. Well, Brianna, how is it? I have it? no idea. Cheddar, it's good. Popcorn, sour cream and onion, caramel corn. So you dip oh, crackers oh, in the chowder? <laughs> kettle corn. Yeah. That's I have weird. Two cases of that. So. Were you being a supporter girl? Actually, uh, we did buy some, but. <laughs> Rick? Yes. We need to know. <laughs> Other than it's hot. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. Success! Brianna, and you almost did it all by yourself. 